care and careless. We have to know both care and careless. Where are care and careless? Someone answers along the lines of thinking about death. Think about death. And what next? That is the starting point, but we're looking at the practice. How do we practice? What do we have to do in order to know? What kind of awareness is the right one? What kind of mindfulness is the right one? We must have some rules, a standard to make it correct, to know if it is correct or not. Then if we break the rules, it can never be correct. There will be no progress. Listen well. We must have sati, that is attention and effort. We must be aware whenever we see an object. Without being aware, without sati, the mind will be pleased whenever it meets any agreeable object. But in that kind of agreeable feeling, that kind of enjoying, there is no true happiness. There is no joy. Not having any true happiness, joy or calm, because of wanting to get to the object, because of the craving to get the thing you want, that is suffering. It is without concentration. Whenever suffering from pleasant feeling starts, there will be no concentration and no peace of mind. And there must be a strong base of morality within the mind in order to be able to concentrate at that moment. With a concentrated mind, yata buta nana dasana, that is, the ability to see things as they are, this will arise. For example, seeing wrong as wrong and right as right, cause of suffering being seen as the cause of suffering, cause of the end of suffering seen as the cause of the end of suffering, seeing things as they really are. We will see the arising of the Dhamma within us at that very moment. But now we can't see it. We lack the effort, patience, attentiveness, carefulness. Most of us are very careless, unknowingly careless. Therefore, we have to establish care and attention at the six sense doors. We must not be careless, heedless, allowing the six sense doors to drive us. We have to be a grown-up in dealing with the six sense doors. Be an adult, one who works on the path, working on the path to remove the kelesa that arise in our mind from the eyes, the ears, the nose, the tongue, body and mind. When he says remove the kelesa, kelesa is a word that means all wrongdoing, all wrong thoughts, ideas, all wrong emotions, anger, fear, jealousy, hatred. Sadness is a kelesa. Emotions are kelesa. Desires, dislikes, love and hate, kelesa. Impure thoughts. So be an adult, one who works on the path, working on the path to remove the wrongdoing, the kilesa, that arises in our mind from the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body and mind, watching and not allowing it to arise out of any agreeable feeling from any sight, sound, smell, taste, touch or thought. Having a base of morality in our mind, then concentration can arise. We have the ability to master the six sense doors. If we are not careless, the greatest task of mastering is at our eyes, not allowing love to arise through the eyes, not allowing hate to arise through the eyes. How? How so? How do we do? We must have perseverance, that is non-stop effort, to grow the sati, this knower, the awareness, to guard our own mind. Grow the sati in the mind to let go of pleasant feelings where they arise in the mind. Then true happiness, joy and calm will arise to defeat the wrongdoing that would otherwise arise in the mind. Before concentration comes, a calm and happy mind must be there. When there is this calm, happy mind, the mind will be steady and right concentration will start to grow. It must be at ease for concentration to grow. That is, yatha bhutayana, 
the ability to see reality as it is, will appear so clearly to us. This Dharma, this truth, has always been there. Only we lack wisdom. Only when we are not careless, not heedless, then wisdom arises at the moment of contact, so we can see as it is. We have to search for the reality. Only knowing the words is of no use. How to find the reality? First I will ask you the questions. When we see something, what happens in the mind? What does it mean to look for reality at the moment we are seeing? How to correct it, how to solve it, when we have the agreeable feeling? What do we do? This is where to know reality. Most of the time we learn the words. It is of no use. Using words does not bring wisdom to see reality as it is. So we have to search for the reality in order to calm the mind, to bring to perfection the true happiness from inside the mind, so that concentration arises in the mind. Only then can the wisdom called Yatha Bhuta Yana Dasana arise. Yana Dasana is to know exactly as it is, how the reality exists, how it is, we can see it exactly according to that. We see it in that way. Without it, we are totally blind and cannot see. In order to be able to see reality as it is, first of all we have to grow and develop the attention and effort in our mind continually. How to do so? I have already used words to explain. Now we have to really do it. Do we want to see reality? Truth. Do we want to know Dhamma? Whenever we meet with the agreeable object, for example, let's say money, we get a huge amount of money. How is our mind right at that moment? Look at the real experience and learn from it. What kind of mind arises based on that object? What happens in the mind based on it? What do we think about that agreeable object? What happens in our mind if we are not careless? Then what do we think? If we don't take care enough, carelessness is always there. That is, the automatic mind is always there. Careless in this case, heedlessness, it means that we do not let go of wrong and develop right. That is already called careless. Taking care, being attentive, heedful, that is when you cut off whatever is wrong and add what is right and good. At that moment there is effort, care, attention and heedfulness. Then how can we have proper care and attention? Suppose we have an agreeable feeling. Like I like, at the moment we go to withdraw money. Then what happens in the mind? How is our mind right at that moment? This is only an example. We should not look at only this one time, but at all times. For example, when we see tasty food, what are we going to do? How do we use care and attention to let go of carelessness and the automatic habit of going to grab the tasty food at that very moment? This is reality, so please answer with reality. In addition to that, the first step is our thought, our view of things. The second is the tasty food. The third is when we crave for the agreeable object. So how do we deal with these? What do we do? Where is carelessness and where is care and attention? So in reality, how do we correct it? We are supposed to correct each and every point of it, every moment of it. Then it can be called true care and attention, heedfulness. We must be able to reach the goal at every moment too. Try to answer, okay? Learn to correct the problems of our lives because our lives are driven by wrongdoing, by kelesa, from our childhood until now, not even realizing how much we are being driven by wrongdoing. So it's time we try to bring effort, care and attention to their perfection. From this moment on, how should we see things in order that we have that heedfulness, care, effort and attention as our refuge? This heedfulness is the highest of all qualities. Whenever heedfulness exists, kelesa cannot arise. The factor which allows quality that has never arisen to arise, and quality arisen already to develop further, is heedfulness. So where do we get heedfulness? 
I am asking, please answer. How, if we can renounce and let go of Kilesa, firstly, happiness will arise, secondly, joy will come, thirdly, is calm, and fourthly, when there is calm, we will be peaceful and happy, the mind will be comfortable. But the comfortable mind must be steady and resolute, determined. Right concentration has to arise based on strong morality. When there is determination, this resolute steadiness, yatha vutayan, or wisdom, arises to see reality as it is. The true Dhamma is always there, but we are not able to see, because of heedlessness. We see only the object as it appears in the mind, with no observer. Why is that? Because the mind is always run by the careless, automatic mind. When right effort and attention is there, when the wisdom is growing, it's then that the reality of things becomes clear to us. The steps that are given are for our own practice on a constant basis. Keep practicing always, daily, every moment, because it is the work of each person to do, nobody can do it for you. Do we know this? Do we see this? Supposedly, when there is contact with an agreeable object, as our mind grabs the object, our mind is happy, right? Happy with that object. But when we really observe it, how it really is, is it really true happiness, or is it false happiness? It is said that we have to observe it thoroughly and carefully until the happiness turns into suffering. And how is this so? When there is contact with an agreeable object, the mind is immediately hooked by that and pulled towards that object. When we manage the great task of becoming aware, we will observe our own mind right at that moment. How is it? We agree that getting hold of the object in the mind is being changed into a feeling of happiness, right? But it is said to be suffering, because what is this so-called happiness? What we have to see is that our mind is like the ocean. When there is no wind, it is calm without any ripples. When our mind is steady, only then it should be called being happy. But in this case, our mind is like it is being blown by the wind and it ripples. Is that happiness? The more agreeable the object, the more the mind ripples, the more the water is disturbed. That which is actually suffering is what we believe to be happiness. But in reality, it is suffering. If we don't realize that it is suffering at that very moment, we can't let go of suffering. This is truth, already. We can just observe this reality within our own mind. To see how our mind ripples when we are happy. We are happy, comfortable, having fun. The very happiness we feel is, in fact, the suffering. Why? Because it's not calm. Calm and peace is happiness. Here there is no peace, because it jerks, it's being pulled. If the water ripples, what's good about it? Where is peace when it ripples? This is the truth. The mind jerks, it's pulled. Because of desire for that agreeable object. That is called suffering. We are taught to observe that the true suffering is that way. The true suffering is said that it should be observed as if it were an arrow, like the arrow piercing to our heart. It hurts terribly. When one is increasingly fed up with it, but we cannot let go of it, it hurts terribly. So we have to see it as if it were an arrow. Whenever we feel happy, observe that, in fact, it's suffering, not happiness, in order that we can let go. If we still see that it is happiness, how can we let go of it? We have to see that it's suffering. The suffering that disappoints us a lot, observe it until we see that it's an arrow so we can let it go. Now there's a question from the audience, what about indifference, what about not caring, not happiness, not unhappiness? When we feel indifferent about something, this is the answer coming, when we feel indifferent about something, when we're neutral, this is just not knowing the mind. It's part of ignorance that's just pure not knowing. We don't realize this neutral, we don't see it. The ignorance is hiding. The indifference of neither happiness nor pain 
is the place where ignorance is hiding, where the ignorance appears. We have to see that it is ignorance. This is also changing. This is also dependent on things. Whatever is a Nietzsche changing, impermanent and dependent on other things, we can't take it to be our refuge. So, we have to search for the reality in order that we can let go. If we can renounce, we will know it right away. The first is true happiness from inside. Remember this true happiness. Do we have true happiness in our mind? Renunciation must be followed by happiness, joy, calm and peacefulness. The happiness from renunciation is not the same agreeable feeling as I mentioned earlier. The one that I was talking about before is called the suffering mind. We understand that once we saw it to be happiness, but on the contrary we now see that it is actually suffering. We have to be able to let go this way. When we know the way to work, we will be at ease, and then concentration will arise. Then Yatha Bhutayana arises. We never knew our mind before, but once Yatha Bhutayana arises, we are able to see what we were not able to see before. That is where wisdom starts. To end the suffering of the mind involves training, training the mind to know how to work, to know how to remove the suffering of the mind. Remove carelessness by effort and attention in this way. We have to practice constantly. Occasional practice cannot catch up with the wrongdoing, with the kelasa. We have to be able to catch it at every moment of the mind, to work on and develop the qualities of the mind within ourselves this way. The dhamma that the mind catches to see is to be found through non-stop and constant practice, right practice. A pariyanaya dhamma, that is the dhamma for not falling back, the way of not falling back, the quality of not falling, this too is simply to be found in constant and non-stop practice. If we don't have it, we will fall, we will fail. And how does it happen that we fall? How does it happen that we grow? Do you understand? Go and look for the real thing at the moment you come in contact with the object. If we don't understand, we can't find the real thing. We'll just be pleased with the object. We'll just be pleased with the object, with a careless mind. We have to understand this point, otherwise we will not be able to practice correctly. If there are any questions, you should ask. So first of all, you have to have perseverance. Without perseverance, you won't get anywhere. When we have perseverance already, then how do we grow the right awareness, the right attention? This is called sati, to guard the mind. So we have a section now, second section about sati, guarding the mind. How do we grow awareness, sati, to guard the mind? It is not easy. We might think that anyone can be automatically aware, automatically attentive. In fact, it is not like this. Carelessness is always in the mind, all the time, as a default state, as the nature of the mind. But if the attention and effort is already there in the mind, carelessness cannot arise. When they practice rightly, they do it in this way. Where is the mind? What is the mind for? When does it appear? We have to get to know the mind first. How does the mind arise? How does the mind behave when we think? When the mind arises with a thought, we have to look and see. How to watch the thinking? We must have an observer over the mind, make a guard for thoughts. The mind is the object to be guarded. The guard must keep the mind well behaved. How does the guard work? The guard should observe, observe and watch the mind. Do not allow the thought to arise without being watched, without being observed. There must be a guard to watch it. Thoughts are like an ill-behaved child. Firstly, there is ignorance in the thought. It is this ignorance that causes us to be ill-behaved. The ill-behaved child is not us. 
the ill-behaved child, is the restless thoughts in the mind, which makes the mind to roll in wrongdoing, kelesa, selfishness. So what should we do to guard the child, so as not to let him fall out of his seat? There must be a guard watching him. Watch him so he won't fall out of the seat. This is the metaphor, the example for the mind. It needs a guard to watch the thought, to train it and pull it back so it won't wander here and there, thinking about this and that. Apart from doing what is right, that is, letting go, letting go of hatred or ignorance, the thought should be kept in one subject and one work, that is, letting go of ignorance, and looking how things really are, seeing reality as it is, as we have seen. We have to train, guarding the mind to watch and not allowing it to think unobserved. The normal awareness, consciousness of the mind, is an instinct, an automatic thing. It's not an effort. We are aware that thinking arises and it's about this and that. On and on. Normal awareness, the automatic one, involves moha. It is the moha, not knowing, not being aware, that drives thinking about this and that endlessly. Each and every day, non-stop. No peace can ever be found. That is moha, not knowing. Being conscious, automatically by an instinct, is simply how it feels to be awake, aware. This normal awareness is within sati, within the true awareness to observe the mind. We should practice to have the second type of awareness, the true attention that is sati. Don't let the mind be unguarded, and roll in moha. The normal awareness and the normal mind is under the influence of ignorance. Use the right awareness, the sati, which is without ignorance, to investigate. Just like the police investigating a criminal, where the kelesa, the mind in moha, is a criminal, develop the right awareness, the sati, to keep guard over the criminal, not letting the thought follow the criminal. We have to have sati to guard the mind this way. Do not let carelessness drive the mind to automatically follow the object. Guard the mind constantly. In the same way that when we listen, for example, listening to me, we have a guard to prevent our thoughts from going away from what I'm saying. When we listen, we need a guard right when we listen in order not to understand wrongly. But now we must learn to guard all six senses with right understanding. Whenever we eat, for example, the guard must be with us, not to allow the wrong thought to arise. Do not allow the mind to think that it is delicious, it's so good. This is an example, it's an image, a metaphor. In reality, there is no one watching, no one there controlling the mind not to wander away. If there were really a, such a guard that we could keep with us, our mind would never wander away. But in reality, wherever there is sati, there is a guard to observe. Wherever there is a guard, that is when we are aware. That is when we have sati. So we need to put it there, to grow it in our mind. Do you understand? We need perseverance, constant effort to keep on guarding the mind, to bring it back and remind it continually. All the time, developing sati, to train and discipline this guardian of the mind. You have to train this one first, the watcher, the observer of the mind, and the clean-up will follow. The mind becomes pure. Only when there is no purification, the impure mind can exist. But when we think rightly, the impure mind, driven by Kelesa, cannot remain. Since we have only one mind moment at a time, when you put goodness, when you put good quality, the Kelesa and selfishness has to go. So yes, you have to start training first. Only then can you understand.